I'll survive a shark attack in Bondi Beach. Yeah! The woman's had a baby abducted, mate. No, we've got everyone looking. <laughs> Maxi must confirm if the fin is a shark or just a dolphin. Maxi and trainee Anthony Glick are following a school of salmon 250 metres offshore. There's been a few shark sightings in the area recently, so they're just launched for jet ski as a precautionary measure. Just have a quick patrol, see if they can see anything fishy, and uh, report back soon. It actually looks very sharky out there right now. Overcast day, murky water. Mate. I remember saying, mate, let's wrap it up. We've been out for about an hour. Uh, as I look out to sea, I saw a couple of birds lift. And I just saw this fin just cruising through the water. Yeah, he's a little scared. You know, Clint was telling me to slow down, stop doing quick movements. Maxi must confirm if the fin is a shark or just a dolphin. That's 100%. 100% a shark. Maxi said he'd definitely seen it, and uh, look, there's nothing else we can do but hit the button. Here we go, shark alarm. Gonna have to close the beach, confirm shark spotting from the boys out there on the jet ski. The alarm went off and we had to just get the first wave in. It's pretty, it's pretty scary. Look at that spear fisherman out there. He's shark bait. Yeah, Maxi, it's most probably in line with second ramp, about 200 out. There's a shark, buddy. Yeah, I'll get in if I were you, buddy. You know, as soon as the beach was clear, I uh, went back out to where we last saw it and tried to see it, but there was no success. Lifeguards want to reopen the beach to swimmers, but can't be sure there isn't still a shark in the bay. They call for assistance. We only usually call Lifesaver 1 if something really big happens, where, you know, we need the bird's eye view. They were very, very low, and I was like, they're, they're onto something here. I don't know if Maxie's seen a different shark, but yeah, Lifesaver one said that they seen a, a one metre shark. You know, it's definitely the shark that we saw was bigger than one metre. There's not much more we can do for you guys today. We'll be getting back to the last of the day. Thanks for calling. Copy in Lifesaver one. Bondi lifeguard now. Lifesaver one heads back to base. But Bondi's lifeguards patrol for another hour to make sure no sharks, big or small, remain in the bay. The beach is open, guys. <laughs> Among tens of thousands of beachgoers, Hoppo finds a little boy adrift on the beach. Bunny's lost, he's lost his gear. Oh. So we're trying to find his gear. Hey, mate, I saw you before. You should have said something before. And now we're trying to find his mum. We're trying to find his mum as well. Nine-year-old Bob lives locally. His parents and belongings are nowhere to be found. You were around here. It's right, mate. It's right to leave without you. It's right. It's right, mate. I saw your mum again, eh? Just give me the number and we'll have a go. Thankfully, Bob remembers his mother's number. Because she was she asleep. She was asleep. So you came down your own? Yeah. So your mum's at home. Yeah. <laughs> your calling is switched off or not in coverage. Please try again later. Switched off. We've sort of established now his mum's at home, he's a local kid. He's come down for a swim, left his gear amongst the crowd, now I can't find where he's left his gear. He's getting a bit upset about it. Tried ringing his mum, but the phone switched off. We're sort of stuck with him for a while. He might uh, 
become our little mascot for a little bit and hopefully when the crowd goes a bit we can uh, find his gear. It's too busy on the beach for the lifeguards to leave their posts. So Hoppo enlists an apprentice. The, the rip's over there, isn't it? The rip's over there. See how the rip's falling across? Is the rip scary? Yeah, have you been caught in a rip? No? You know how to swim out of a rip, though. Yeah? Yeah? You wouldn't get caught in a rip. No, no one today, no gashes today. On Monday? Huh? On Monday, any gashes? Yeah, there's a few. What did I rip there? Did that, did the one right across there, right across his eye. Did he cry? No, no he didn't cry. Did you go to hospital? It's tough, went to hospital. Oh. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. How are you, Bob? Yeah. Unbelievable, eh? After going through thick and thin, the two amigos should be inseparable. Yeah, we we'll go back to Maxi. Back to Maxi. I've walked all around the beach for about an hour trying to help him. And as soon as he found his gear, he's brushed me and he goes, I'm going back to Maxi, so I'll, I'll give it away. <laughs> After finally getting through to his mum, young Bob disappeared into the crowd and made his way back home. You guys, I've got 12 missed calls. <laughs> probably so, from his mum? Yes, from, probably from his mum. Do you think he might be in trouble? Maybe, yes. So at, least, at least he'll blame you because the only name he remembers is Maxie. Yeah. I don't know, he just kept saying your name. <laughs> but you know what I reckon it was? Is he could probably communicate at the same level. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi guys, this is North. Uh, we've got a lost child, eight years old. It's a girl. She's got a two-piece blue bikini on, and she's last seen in the water. I was down in the north, and a mother came up to me. She was kind of okay, you know. She's like, "Look, I've lost my child. Can you help me out?" It's not, it's not frantic yet. I asked her if she could swim. She knew the rules and all that kind of stuff. 100%. There's no kid being sucked out here because I've been here. She's in the shallows looking for her. I hope she comes back and tells me that she finds a kid. Initially, I wasn't too worried. The beach is so crowded. For a small kid, you get disorientated really easily. Before they know it, they're lost. And then this lady came up to me who was just swimming the bay. Look out there, and there was a girl holding a hand up, and she, she kept going under the wave, so I was kind of like closing out on her. All right, thank you. Well, I guess before that stage, I wasn't even thinking the kid was in the water. When that lady came up to me who didn't know what was going on and actually said that to me, that made me think maybe I did miss the kid. This is North. Can I just have a jet ski up here pretty much quickly? I had a lady come up to me yeah. and say to me that she was out the back in this hole. Yeah. She saw a little girl waving her hands up and down and then she disappeared. I'm going to try and find a mum down here. I'll, I'll let you know. We've got everyone looking. I'm going to hang down here for a bit of noise, guys. Mum was having a breakdown. She was screaming. She wasn't making much sense. And I started stressing out. Having a hysterical parent just adamant that their child was in the water and had drowned, you know, obviously you're gonna, you're gonna be start to freak out a little bit. If anything happened, it was squarely my fault. No one else's, because I was watching. It's the flagged area, so that just triples the guilt that you feel. Hi everyone down here, look, we've got a lost child. She's been missing for about half an hour. She's eight years old and she has a blue two-piece bikini on. Mum's getting pretty frantic, so with a uh, beard, he's just walked down now. He's, he's being a champ and staying back and trying to help us out a bit. Oh, it's so long. And it was a, a blue bikini, blue. one piece or two pieces? And what was her name? Alicia. 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 And I'm going to stay close to the mummy. They're just going to go back where their towel and stuff are, and I'll have a good, I'll have a good search up the beach. I'll let you know how it goes. Yatesy was pretty much pulling his hair out down there. He was just ready to, to strip off and start basically looking for a body. Chapo, I'm going to come out. I'll meet you out there. 
One of the most anxious and stressful times I've had down here in over 10 years. I thought I missed a drowning and I just nearly vomited. I'm pretty stressed right now, actually. <laughs> to Amita has been searching for her three-year-old son since he ran off more than 30 minutes ago. The temperature is over 40 degrees and Amita has been carrying her five-year-old son as she searched the beach. Managing the parents can be really challenging. We need them to help us and assist us in finding the child. What was he wearing? What t-shirt? He's wearing like a white hand singlet. And a little short shorts. What's his name? M M Maddie. 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 Immediately I went off and started the search. And then Jules came in. She checked the girls' toilets. We looped around the pavilion. It's the end of the day and light is fading. Boys are going out on the beach. <laughs> Maddie! The search reaches the 40 minute mark. And there is no sign of the young boy. <laughs> I've lost one of my children at Clow Valley Beach one day and it's something that I'll never forget for as long as I live. You literally feel like you're going to be sick. It's going to be all right. But you need, to, you need to be OK yourself, OK? As light fades, the shutters come down. Lifeguards call police. Chapo needs a meter's assistance. Mama. But she's suffering from heat stroke. Hey. I was trying to get her moving, getting her coherent, getting her to try and help us. You okay? Oh, I hadn't dealt with a situation like this before. Anita. Hey, we're just gonna sit down the first aid bed. Anita, hey. The search had gone on for quite a while. The worry's really starting to set in with me. The mother couldn't help us, so the five-year-old brother was the, the key witness. Lifeguards are looking for a small boy in a white singlet. Big brother, get the family together, that Arvo. Anita, listen, you need to help us now. Are you, are you awake? Then, Dino spots a small boy in the shallows. When I first saw him, there was a lady there watching, and I went and asked her, I said, is this your child? And she said, no. Dino confirms the child is unaccompanied by a parent. Jeez, I hope it's, uh, I hope it's his kid, because uh, I've just picked him up and taken him. The brother knows the Dino. We just needed some confirmation before we got all the way back up to the tower. Hey, this other buggy. Is this Maddie? Is this your brother? Is this Maddie? Yes! That's him. Tim, all right. You want to have a race? Race him. Let's go. Let's go see Mum. Got him. Got him. Got him. Found him. He's coming. Got him on the beach. Sorry, guys. Oh my God. I'm just taking some kids out on a Bondi rescue experience. We offer it to charities where they can auction it off to help raise money for particular charities. We left the Bay of Bondi and we started heading over towards Bronte. The further you go away from land and you've got three kids with you, you're always worried about what lurks beneath. 
Oh, no way. Shark. As we were driving along the back of Bronte, I saw a fin pop up about three metres from me. Is it a shark? Yes. I was like, maybe it's a dolphin, and then I saw its tail fin, and I was like, that's definitely a shark. Hey, uh, jet ski to Central and Bronte lifeguards. I've got about a six to eight foot shark out the back here. Description. Hammerhead. Dark. Quite dark. I don't think it was a hammerhead. I only just sort of saw the fin and its back fin as well. Uh, seal out, Bronny, this morning. Wasn't a seal, was it? Nah, nah, they, they're definitely a shark. That's definitely 100%. Just so you know, buddy, I just saw a shark out there. Oh, he's probably another 500 metres out. Don't raise the alarm. I, I told the boys. I'll just let you know. It was, probably, it was only about eight foot, but it, it was. Should we go see if we can see the shark again? No! <laughs> It was dark and black, and um, it, it was really, it, it came pretty close to us. We only really saw the fin, but it came pretty close, so it was a bit scary. That was my first time seeing a shark. I guess throughout the day, we'll probably be keeping our eyes peeled, but there was also a seal, so, you know, just every time we see a black thing moving in the water, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a shark. But about three or four hours later that afternoon, Danny McKell was dealing with a father in the tower. He just sighted a shark and his son was still in the water. Just watching my son, just watching my son. I actually okay. saw it too and go that way. I saw it in my boy out. Yeah. He's only living, so it's like. Yeah. We saw a shark. I saw one at the tip of a wave as it was about to break. I just had three come up saying they definitely saw a shark. Yeah, we're, we're sounding the alarm now. Just attention, all the people in the water. There's been a confirmed shark sighting. The shark alarm is off. We do advise you to get out of the water, please. It's brownie grey. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. on its own. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. At the time, I wasn't convinced that it was a shark. We have had a seal hanging around. Oh. It may not have been a seal, but it may have been a shark. We don't know, so we've got to kind of do this. It sounds pretty... And how you it did look a bit like a seal, I guess. Yeah. The most common question we get asked, is there any sharks out there? That's the number one thing we get asked. But if you think about it logically, chances of getting killed by a shark are less than being killed by ants, I've heard recently. There's still a couple of surfers in the water, but you always expect that. Yeah. No one runs always going to get out. There's a lot of birds out there. Maybe we need to get Bobby Orwin down here, the shark expert. Maybe he can put this thing to rest. Yeah, jet ski, mate. I'm just going to head out in the boot where all those birds are and see if I can see anything. There's fish everywhere out here, Danny. It wouldn't surprise me. A lot of people do see seals, and I know 100% what I saw out of Bronny, and it was definitely a shark. Seals look a lot like sharks under the water, and we do have seals around here. Chapeau wants to say seal, that's fine by me. I, I, li I like to wait till I see things with my own eyes before I make my own decision. No, I believed you earlier. Oh, no, I'm not saying that you don't. General consensus amongst the lifeguards at the moment is that it was a seal. The outcome was that the dad was reunited with his kid and nothing terrible happened. Pretty scary, I was just watching a, a National Geographic episode of Sydney Harbour and the Bull Shark, so... Um, just from under, man, it was just brown. It was like Roy Schneider out of Jaws scene, I just basically ran down, shark! Just a little tap of the shark alarm, and then that's a signal for everybody to go back in the water. It is the ocean, there are seals and sharks out there, so... I don't know. You be the judge. A shark has been reported harassing surfers at South Bondi, but sounding the shark alarm is a major decision. With four independent witnesses, Hoppo decides it's no joke. But should he panic thousands of swimmers or risk a shark attack itself? Surely it's more forward. Yeah, that's right. They knew it could be a gag, but they don't know each other. Better get four around of people. Kyle does the honours. Oh, there's only one bottom one, huh? Just attention, everyone out in the water. We've just had a shark sighting. 
We've scouted the shark alarm. If everyone would just like to make their way back to shore, just until we clear the area and make sure it's safe to swim. The shark net across Bondi only provides a deterrence. Shark sightings inside the net are not uncommon. Quiggers and Chapo head out to warn surfers who've either ignored the shark alarm or don't know what it means. Majority of the time, the sharks will swim through, and uh, you may not even see them half the time, you know. But there might be one hanging around. There's a lot of fish around at the moment, so you never know. There could be one just hanging around feeding this time of the night. We'll um, do a search for uh, probably 15 minutes. They'll, they'll go up and down just to check it out. And once it's all clear, we don't see anything. We'll let the pretty much everyone get back in the water again. If lifeguards find the shark, they'll use the jet ski to try to chase it out to sea. Uh, I didn't see anything. Plenty of fish. It doesn't deter the surfers, as you can tell. They just want to know how big it is. Anything over 10 foot, they might get out. But, uh, yeah, I think we can probably give the all clear. The all clear is signalled, and the lure of the surf becomes irresistible. This is all we needed to end this crazy weekend, a shark sight. Just as the shark menace dwindles, Brazilian surfer Icarus comes to the tower with startling evidence. And that's when I fell and uh, swam towards the board and the piece of my board was missing. I was kind of like, what happened? Did I hit the sand bank or not? I wasn't sure what really happened. So I was looking for the rest of the piece. Couldn't find it, swim out. One of the boys saw me and said, that's a bite. Well, see, look, if you look there, straight down there, it looks like straight teeth. Yeah. Pretty, pretty you know, an unusual thing that happens. Reckon that's not going to happen to me again in my life, so might as well hang that as a piece of artwork and then I'll survive a shark attack in Bondi Beach. Yeah! Well, I just seen the little girl running up to the tower. I thought it was just a missing kid. Couldn't find her mother, and then I come out in, onto the stairs and the mother was already on the stairs. We knew something was wrong here and we needed to find out quickly what was happening. The woman and her daughter speak just a few words of English. She pointed out to one of the only reps that are pulling on the beach and I just had a bad feeling about this one. Harrison, I just get the thing. Jesse and I looked at each other and we thought this isn't good. Jesse grabbed deep and straight away. I was a bit rattled when they kind of pointed at the water because, you know, it's all on our shoulders when people point at the water. How did you get so Yeah. Oh. Where is he? Oh. Tell us what's going on. We need to know. We're trying to help is you. Is he out there? They're pointing just to the side of the flags when there was a, a big gutter. The woman last saw her son when he went swimming 20 minutes ago. He was wearing a white T-shirt. Can you, can you tell us what's happening? All these other tourists are coming to our aid, which is really nice because we needed a translator. I'm not Chinese. But unfortunately, she goes, no, nah, no, nah, she speaks Korean. I'm like, oh, no, nah, that doesn't help. I'm Korean. We need to know what's going on. My son needs a tail. If someone can't swim and they drop off the sandbank, Five seconds, they're under. Several minutes have passed since the woman approached lifeguards, and there is still no sign of a teenager in a white t-shirt. Can't see anyone in trouble, boys. I think she knew that she had lost her son, and, and she thought for the worst as well. And, and that's just for a mother, that's just heartbreaking. Then the boy is spotted coming out of the water. He has a white t-shirt in his hand. I found him. I found him. The teenager is oblivious to the distress he's caused his sister and mother. I just felt like the whole of the world just, just lifted off my shoulders. He's there. Oh. Settle down. It's all right. It's all right. Oh. Deep breath. Deep breath. Deep breath. I felt so sorry for her. You know, she just broke down. You know, she obviously felt for the worst as well. When he came out of the water, she just ran at him like you're throwing, throwing a bowling ball at the pin. 
Yeah, he would have been in shit when he got home. Where are you going to go? It's cool here, see? A young boy was found alone in the crowd of 20,000 people. Find your, find your mum and dad. Harry just found this poor little Asian boy lost, crying, and he um, obviously doesn't know any English, and Harry can't speak any Chinese, so it's just a big language barrier. I, don't want to go. I might just hit up someone. Harry's need to translate it to get a name or a description of the boy's parents. But he doesn't even know what language he speaks. Hey, don't want to hit Korea, China, Malaysia. <laughs> Far out. This is a hard one. It's all right, matey. It's all right. You have some water. Come on. Come on. It's all right. Settle. Lifeguards mobilise in the search for a potential translator. As Harry's babysits. Even hand signals, with, he's, he's only so young and the poor thing's so worked up. But he's just, <laughs> he's just hammered me with sand. <laughs> it's all right. Oh, that's good, he's going to tire himself out. He's not a very happy chappy. He's not happy. The lifeguards have found a beach girl that they think can help translate. <laughs> I can't understand what he's saying. He's, he's lost. He's like, the poor little chap doesn't know what, what's yeah. going on. This is good. This is what I like. This is technology. In the tower, Harry's has another smart idea. Anyone there? This one? Hold on, I'm going to try one more time. Ready? Zero, and you go. Which one? But just before the mystery number connects. Oh, great. <laughs> he doesn't like the lifeguard, the young bloke. Even Harry's couldn't wear his charm on him. You don't have to swim in this part. I was kind of looking at the water, concentrating, because there was a pretty bad rip running. You hear a noise, the background noise. You always hear noise. Jennifer! And it's getting louder and then louder. We've just got a missing kid, her name is Jennifer. Jennifer! Jennifer! Her name was Jennifer. She was 10 years old from Shanghai. And yeah, they come out here for Christmas. Hey, mate, was that her yelling I could hear in the background? Yeah, screaming, top of her lungs. No way. Mate, I'm not joking, she cleared the water for us. Mate, I can't believe it. Yeah, the megaphone, it works good. Turn it right up and everyone will hear what you're saying. Jennifer! But I think Mum's on about level 12. We've only got level 10. Pink gloves? Yes, yes. And pink gloves too. Any kids with pink gloves on? 30 degrees. Jennifer! Can you show my other lifeguard friend the photo of Jennifer? Yeah, I just think the photo of her. Oh, OK. She just came in here. I just came in this before, you know? And she's got pink gloves on. Yeah. Okay, we should be able to see her then. Okay, thank you very much. Jennifer! The worst thing that could have happened to Jennifer was drown or get kidnapped. It comes straight to your straight to your mind straight away. It's just like, okay, we've got a missing person. Is she dead or is she alive? Is there any girl out in the water called Jennifer? If anyone sees a Jennifer or Jennifer, you can hear us. Your mum's looking for you. You've got to really trust your instincts and, and look and think where a little girl might be. All little girls dress the same. 
They're wearing pink. Your eyes tune in to everything pink. I tend to like look around and I can't see any pink. It's like there's pink everywhere, but I just can't see it. Got him! Got him! I'm actually interested to see Jennifer myself, and I think the whole beach is too. Yeah, we found Jennifer. Yeah, mate, we're out. I'm down. She's in between the second and third ramp, exactly halfway up the beach. Surprisingly, she was not too far away, definitely in her mum's earshot. Hey, Jennifer. I know if I was Jennifer's mum, I wouldn't be able to speak the next day. No more tears. Yeah, I was scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's all here? Yeah, Jelly. See you, Jennifer. Bye-bye. That's all right. Hey, all of a sudden, we were approached by a man from China, and uh, you could tell he was just very distressed. One hour ago, we just got to here. Now we put everything here and uh, settle down. And uh, he went to the beach first. For a swim? Yeah, the first swim. So I can't see him. So we were able to establish that his son was 17 years of age. Uh, he was last seen uh, going for a swim. And did he come back? No, never. The last time you saw him, he was going for a swim. Yeah, I, I didn't know. I don't know if this may swim or not. Did he say he was going for a swim? Yeah, that's oh. swim. Well, first and foremost, you, you communicate back with Central, so... We just let them know that we, we have a missing person. 17 year old uh, Asian male wearing blue underwear. Last seen about an hour ago um, with the intent of going for a swim. Okay, okay Tommy, just we just got to get, let's just get this last detailed description of the last spot they seen him. Was he entering the water? Was he on the shore? It's good, I just sort of, you know, to escalate it. When there's a missing person, there's a process of eliminations down here. So it's either water or land, and obviously it's escalated quite quickly if it's in the water. So he, 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 your last communication with him was that he was going to go for a swim. Yeah, 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 yeah. Came back. yeah, 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 yeah. Lifeguards are disturbed by the information they've heard so far. How are we looking, Tommy? Cool. Uh, I'm just going over to have a chat with the wife. She's, uh, she's just sitting out here waiting, um, largely unchanged, all these closings here. She seems pretty distraught now that I'm walking over to her. By that stage as well, the whole situation had become a little bit more dramatised because we'd located the mother. Hi. Uh, what's your name? My name is We're just looking for him at the moment. I'm sure it'll be OK. I'm sure it'll be fine. No, no, no. His name's Fan, yeah? F-A-N? His yeah, name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was almost as if she had to be cared for because she was starting to show a few signs and symptoms of potentially slipping into shock. I just need to get you... I want my son! I'm sure he's going to come back. The missing boy's father begins to fear the worst. I'm sure he'll come back. Oh. Back to the centre, mate. I might take old mate for a rove along the shore. He just said, tower him back. Hey, and just while you've got that vehicle, turn around, just do a megaphone announcement down the beach to, uh, just to see, maybe get the dad to do it, so then he, he notice his voice. Yeah. With every passing minute, concerns for the boy only grow greater. It's hit the hour mark. You know, the last footsteps were seen entering the water. First point of contact is the police. Hello, can I, hello there. It's Harry's from the lifeguards down at Bondi. How are you going? Yeah, Bondi. Yeah, good. We've got a reported missed Asian boy down at the southern end of Bondi. So at this stage, we're, we're still in a search and rescue mode, whereas I'm getting the police, I'm contacting the police. 
I'll have jet skis down on the shoreline, lifeguards are going out, it'll be a search and rescue phase for looking for this person. <laughs> Lifeguards scan the water for any sign of the boy. They're not the most dangerous conditions we've ever had, but they're certainly not the safest. As the search time approaches 90 minutes, lifeguards scour the middle of the beach, 500 metres from where the boy went missing. Then, finally, a breakthrough. I saw it. I saw it. He's up, we found him. He's, he's with your husband. Thanks, guys. My son come back. Yeah, he come back. He's OK. <laughs> she went from, you know, almost complete panic to just elation. Thank you very much. Oh, <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a bit scary. Oh, I come back. My son come back. Yeah, he's with, really? your, he's with your husband now. Oh, yeah. oh, thank you very much. That's okay. Hello. <laughs> you worry your mother's sick. <laughs> I think you took 10 years off her life then. <laughs> Maybe 20. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah. Okay. Enjoy yeah. your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So you, um, Tourist? No, I live here. Live here? Uh -huh. How long have you been living here? About one year. Okay. So you get down to here by not much? Uh, sometimes I get... There's no more fearsome sound for a Bondi surfer than the shark alarm. Well, I don't even know who, who called it. Some guy down there. They're all standing on the edge. They're watching it down there. They've seen it? Yeah, they're all, look, that mob is still standing there. As surfers and swimmers head for the safety of the beach, Bobby and Azza head out to try and find the shark. Did the kids see it or you saw it as well? I saw the fin inside the board. Yeah, there was a guy shaking and grabbed his board. You grabbed his board? No, the shark grabbed his board. The shark, the shark grabbed his board? Yeah, yeah. No! <laughs> you right yeah. serious? Yeah. 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 I'm going to go try and have a look for him, but um, he's actually ran off. I don't know if he must have been scared, I guess, but yeah, he's ran off. Yeah, mate, I'm happy with that. Uh, Bondi Central clear. <laughs> he turned around and paddled straight in, screaming. There he is. You know? Yeah, there he is, there. Yeah, it tried to bite me, but I, and I just... So you were my... the kid that had his board? Yeah. It didn't, it didn't bite it, I just chucked my board at it and I swam in. You serious? Yeah, I'm so scared. Well done, mate. Ah, you did well, you did well. No, what are they doing out there? Are They're they looking just... for it, mate, yeah. Did you see it I thought it was a dolphin and then it like, and like, I just saw its mouth open and I just f***ing <laughs> chatted. No, it was, it was so a de scared. definite sign. Yeah. That the first shark you've seen? Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully oh. the last. Yeah. yeah. Can I help you find mummy and daddy? It'll be all right. Just come, we'll come in here and have a sit down. Yeah? She was like at the end of the pier. See where the mule was painting his long ear. She was long ear. Yeah. There was nobody. You can't see anybody looking for her at all. Okay. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So this man will look after you really now. Okay. Come inside. Yeah. And we'll, we'll go and look for mummy and daddy up that way for you as well. Yeah. We'll help you find her. Yeah. <coughs> Come on. I didn't want to wander off that up. The little girl may not speak English, or is too distraught to speak at all. Might need to get a hand to come in. Yeah, let's go in here and we'll see. <laughs> What's your name? This is Megan. What's your name? What's your name? <laughs> Jessica? <laughs> Jessica? Lisa? I'm just trying to get some names. Sarah? Oh. This could take some time. What's your name? <laughs> With no information to work with, it's difficult to know where to begin the search. Where was the last time you have seen your mum? What's mum's name? Tom, what's your name? Should I find her? Should we try and find 
Mummy and Daddy on the TV screen? The only place they could have been probably was by the car park, because that's where she was wandering that's around by the stairs. It's all right. It's all right. Troy and Maxie give her some old-fashioned TLC. Do you, do you want to have a look and see if you can see her? Have a look. Do you want a nice block? Do you want a nice block? Do you want a nice block? No. Security vision doesn't reveal any familiar faces. Central to all Bondi lifeguards. Uh, we've got a lost girl. Can't get any information ever. She's crying. So I'm interested. Destroy parents. Just step up here. Hey, Constable. Uh, this is Maxi from the lifeguards. How are you? Good, mate. Mate, we just got a lost kid here. Just uh, wondering if um, anyone's come up there to look for him. But just as Bondi is being mobilised... Is that Mummy? Yes? Yes. Tell Daphne. Is that Mummy? Yes. She's coming this way. Sorry. You want to come out? Lifeguards discover five-year-old Beatrice is on holidays from New Caledonia with her family. As for how she got lost, Dad has a simple explanation. Oh and how many kids have yes. you got? Eight. Eight? Wow. Central, we've got an Asian woman just come up. She can't find her daughter down here. She's been swimming with her for the last 20 minutes. All right, just put it out. All right. I've had a report of a, a daughter and uh, her mother was swimming with the two daughters, Asian, and they've been in here and they've been getting told to move out of the, out of the rip and she's run off the mother with the young daughter and left the 13-year-old. Uh, yeah, the 13-year-old's now missing, so it's a bit of a worry. They said she could sort of swim, but it's uh, a little bit of a worry that she was last seen in the water. Her mother is ordered out of the water for her own safety. After 10 long minutes, sick. Whereabouts are you, Hop? I found her up here near near uh, backpackers. We have her. We have her. Come on. Thank you, Emma. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh right. Where did you go? It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Thank you, Emma. It's all right. It's stressful, but you've got to sort of stay as calm as you can. And because the parents are, are, are frantic, she was going to jump in the rip trying to find her daughter. You could really see on her face the the stre how stressed she was. It's a good feeling that uh, we haven't lost anyone, and it's a great outcome for the family. Stress she made me my very nervous. So thank you very much, and uh, thank you them. Thanks, boys. That was a bit stressful, but happy ending. It's quarter past six in the evening. Um, we're getting ready to start packing the beach up and we get a report that a, a uh, young boy's gone missing. Cool, mate. Thank you. We get a lot of reports like that kind of thing. It's nothing new. It's nothing to freak out about. The mother of the missing boy reveals her son is 14 years old. Mate, we are looking for a kid. The report that I got was that uh, he'd been missing for 30 minutes. So no real heavy alarm bells ringing for me at this point. Yeah, he's just wandered off. But then, Mouse receives disturbing new information. Hey, Corey and Luke. It actually got back to me that the kid had actually been missing for three hours. And um, as soon as I heard that, that was like a real alarm bell for me. That got me worried straight away. And you call the police. Statistically, teenage boys, notorious risk takers, are far more likely to suffer injury or even death by misadventure. The first thing you think is, have I missed someone in the water? Have we distributed lifeguards across the beach evenly all day? You know, could something have been missed? Then, another emergency kicks off behind the tower in Bondi Pavilion. Which is a pretty serious call, so straight away I had to send in Corey and Maxie to go investigate. Mouse calls paramedics. Start radio. Mate, I've just got an unconscious woman in the toilets. We're not too sure what yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good, Luke. You just get on the beach. Right, guys. Right. Turned out to be a girl who had OD'd on drugs. 
and was really close to death. So it was a super serious situation and more of a priority at that stage than the lost child. There are also scores of swimmers still in the water. To pull two lifeguards off the beach to go into the pavilion toilets to help this girl out and then to have Lukey Daniels kind of with his eyes off the water in the south corner looking for the kid, um, I'm, losing, I'm losing soldiers on the beach. Sometimes down by night this crazy thing happens where they just go one after another. Hello, sorry mate, love guys. And you think to yourself, it can't get any worse and then Bondi just throws another surprise at you. Mate, I was just on the phone to the Ambos, I just got, had an unconscious patient. So whereabouts, what's your location there? So while this kid's been missing for three hours and I'm really getting worried about him and this girl's dying in the toilets, someone comes to me with, a, with the classic dislocated shoulder up on the promenade. <laughs> Hello, Robbie. 23, dislocated shoulder. The guy was in a lot of pain. Robbie dislocated his shoulder body surfing. I'm gonna give you some pain relief. Some um, yeah, it'll be really good with the pain. As Mouse keeps one eye on swimmers in the water, he turns his attention back to the missing 14-year-old boy, whose mother is becoming increasingly distressed. We just gotta find this kid. That's 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 getting pretty pressing now. The emotional effect that you get when a person goes missing, or especially a child, um, it's a it's a real dark, deep stomach feeling, like that feeling like something has really, really gone bad. It's nearly 7 p.m. Mouse is yet to resolve any of the three emergencies he's dealing with. I've got an unconscious woman in the bathroom. The boys are on. I've got a dislocated shoulder on the promenade and a kid that's been missing for three hours. The cops are ringing me about. Corey's a senior lifeguard on the beach that day and he was busy taking care of the girl who, who was literally dying in the pavilion toilets. So he was obviously yeah. held up and we were just kind of liaising and talking through it. Yeah, copy. Uh, well, he's going to find the kid, eh? Hey? I might come back. And, um, and I'll hang in the tower, keep an eye, and when the ambos turn up, I'll direct them and then I'll just get back into it again. Here comes the ambo now. Yeah, okay. yeah stand by. I might have to stick around and help, but she's still out. Just, uh, I'm going to have to stretch her out. OK, copy. On the promenade, Robbie is in excruciating pain from his dislocated shoulder. But his afternoon is about to take a turn for the better. So breathe right in and out for your mouth. How are you going there, mate? Uh, probably the least of your worries today. Yeah, I think so. You're it is honestly the best much. thing I've ever had. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't really feel it right now. <laughs> With two sets of paramedics on site, the girl suffering a drug overdose is taken to hospital. And Robbie's shoulder is relocated back into position. Thank you for doing this, man. No worries. You guys are absolute, absolute legends. With the focus back on the missing teenager, lifeguards launch the jet ski. So you're just going to go solo, of course? Yeah. Just get in the water. Yeah. Just get in the water. Yeah. 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 By the time we threw the ski in, it was 7 o'clock, which is our finish time, you know? And to throw the ski in at that time of day, at that hour, it really makes your stomach turn. It's just like, you know, something's not right. The jet ski's in the water, so there's that real feeling of like, has something really bad gone on here? Have, have I missed something? Have we missed something? And then straight away, the door knocks again. Hey, um, we were just around the rock and the girl slipped and cut herself quite badly. Yeah, is she still there? Where is she? Yeah, she's still there. By this time, it's about 10 past seven, so we all should have been at home 10 minutes ago. Let's see if I can get a hold of someone with your IV. Lifeguards working at other beaches have heard the emergencies at Bondi over the radio. They arrive to back up Mouse. We were really struggling, we were really short-handed, and then out of nowhere, Gonzo and Jeffro have finished work at Tama, and they've turned up at Bondi to, to help the boys out, which is unreal. So I sent the Gons up to North Bondi to investigate this girl that was apparently out there covered in blood. She did say she was pretty bad and cut off. I was um, just hanging out with the rocks. So I was trying to get a picture because it was like really good view, and I just got swept under. Hey, this isn't that bad. Yeah. So you can go up to the chemist, look at the back of the on oh, Bondi Road, and just get some stuff from there. Because we're we're finished now. It's, you know, we've got a few other things going on. Yeah, so just... I'll be fine though. I mean, it's not terrible. But I definitely need to go get this plate up right now. But anyways, it's nice meeting y'all. Bye guys. 
So Corey's in the water with a jet ski in a search for a young boy alive, hopefully. You know, we don't know. If he was in the water and he has been in the water for three hours, you know, there's, there's not much hope. And then, bang, we just get the call. Lifeguard, lifeguard, Bondi, over. My boat? We have found him. I don't know where he was. I think he was playing in the water or something. Awesome. Yeah, they just found the kid. Legend. A huge oh, where, and, uh, mate, just massive, massive relief. Huge relief. That's good. That's good. From all reports, the boy was found just playing on the shore in the, in the south corner. And, like, I don't know what to make of that. Like, I just, I just knew that he uh, got back with his family and um, we could just get back with our families, you know? <laughs> Boys, let's pack up and shut the gates, get out of here. The lunatics come on. What a day. It was such a good feeling to pull the shutters down and uh, with not just the boys that were working at Bondi, but also the boys that came over from the other beaches to um, close the day up down at Bondi. A woman's had a baby abducted, mate. Abducted? Abducted. It's a little baby, probably a toddler. Yeah, Laurie's an ex-lifeguard of 20 years and he come running into the tower really concerned that a lady had just reported to him that her baby had been abducted by another lady. I made an announcement down here. Yeah. A group of guys suddenly chirped up and said they're headed down towards the water's edge. This white woman and the baby. Apparently she was seen heading in the, in the direction of... She, she doesn't know the lady. She really. doesn't know the lady. Wow. Should, should we get... Ring the police, definitely. There's such a big crowd, and to try and find someone amongst that crowd who had abducted a baby was just going to be so hard to deal with. Central to Terry. We have had a lady who has had her kid kidnapped from in front of the tower. I notified all the boys on the beach by the radio, but they were about to find out about their own emergency. Everything's just hit the roof. It's just panic stakes everywhere. They were calling it, and so Pum was saying that they were going to hold it. The clubbies here at Bondi Flags are saying that the southern outpost has seen a shark. I can't believe we've got a shark. I mean, they've got the duck and the um, yellow boat out there, so I'm trying to confirm it. This couldn't come at a worse time. Look how many people are on the beach. We're trying to find a baby, and now we've got a shark in the mix. In the back of my mind, I know that I might have to set this shark alarm off, which is going to set this massive crowd into a frenzy, making the search even harder. This is unbelievable. Every single person at the beach would have been worried about this shark. You could tell they're all standing up, but the poor lady looking for a baby, that was the last thing on her mind. Oh, hang on, what was it? What was it? To Aaron Graham. Is that where she got the baby? See that in... Hang on, I might be able to save you the trip here. She... She's got the baby. I'm so relieved the baby's been found. Good Lord. I'm really intrigued to find out what happened. The baby was walking off here. Yeah, she just yeah, she's just walking uh, after her father and I just saw her and I didn't want to let, oh, right. let her alone in the water. We've got one lady claiming that she's found a baby and then we've got another lady claiming that she's had a baby stolen. We're just sitting here and my husband's gone swimming with the, the older the older daughter. And this young, the young girl was playing with uh, the baby here. I looked around and I didn't see my and I just thought, oh my God, what's going on? The baby was following the father and sister down towards the water's edge. And I didn't know what to do because she was just away. And the backpacker girl thought the baby was lost and thought she was doing a good deed. <laughs> and then I just went after her and I said to her, we have to go back, we have to go back. And I didn't want to grab her like, who's this? Don't know her. The mother's gone walking down the water's edge to be informed by a member of the public that a lady had picked the baby up and wandered off into the crowd. I just can't describe how I felt. A lot of things go through your mind in such circumstances. I don't really want to think about it. It was just a massive case of miscommunication. It was just one of those crazy days. Now lifeguards are looking for a lost child. Lost kid in front of second room. Her name's Jessie, she's Asian in parents and she's four years old. Parents came up to me and um, said that they left their child in front of me 
on the water's edge while they went for a walk, and when they came back, she was gone. It's only four years old. While Jessie's mother frantically searches, a friendly local has brought Jessie to the lifeguards. I just saw her wandering along the beach on her own. I got a bit frightened. <laughs> It's just That's just right come up tower. to the tower. That's the lifeguard tower. Oh. They've got it up there, so if you go up there, oh. they've got it. Beardy isn't impressed. Jesse was found unattended in front of lifeguards. It's world's cheapest babysitting service, I think some people think we are. I think mum's coming, mum, mum's coming up. 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 Thank you. For Jesse, a stick of licorice has made everything okay. <laughs>